Uh... Dark as the room is now, I can see through the false mirror. There is a man on the other side, heavily restrained, desperately trying to free himself. He has an expression of unbearable horror on his face. What the hell is going on here? I don't get why such a room would exist. Why would there be a huge... Uh, well, not a huge room, but a room with a huge mirror. Hmm. A thin piece of nickel used to keep the window open. Half a shilling. That is, six pence. Oh, six pence is one... Half a sh oh, okay. I have no idea how that currency works. I was thinking, like, pennies. Like, six pence would be, like, six pennies. Alright, well, let's go get a newspaper and give it to Miss... Person whose name starts with an R. Thank you, sir. Here you are. Alright, now that I bought a newspaper, are you perhaps more talkative? Maybe. About the asylum. Alright. You know there are always voices coming from the place at night. Crying, singing, and the inhabitants cursing like damned souls. That's the usual. This night was different. It was all silent, I tell you. Not a single noise in the whole street. I looked at the madhouse and saw all the windows black. No lights. Everybody asleep in that place? Now that's strange. Then I heard it. It was a scream like no other I've ever heard. Not of a man or a woman, but of a devil from hell. That is very curious indeed. Thank you for telling me. Okay, demon. Got it. Cool. Can I read the newspaper? Today's Illustrated London News. The first headline is about a grim case. Scotland Yard keeps its silence about the ambassador of Turkey, found dead last Saturday in mysterious circumstances. Our sources suspect he may have been murdered. The second. Sea monster found in St. Ives. The remains of a serpent from the deep were found on the beach early yesterday morning. It is suspected they come from a seaside museum in Spain, destroyed a month ago by the sea waves during a terrifying storm. There is another drawing advertising an operata called Love Brushstrokes. Okay, hold on. I remember there's something over here that I forgot to look at. This. Yeah, what is that? A few cardboard sheets lie on the bench. Each shows a perfectly symmetric design in black ink. Oh, are those his drawings? His new ones? Please do not touch them. Fair enough. Would you like a piece of metal? He does not want a piece of metal. Actually, what is this? Inmate quarters. Let's suppose I can go in here. The large door is made of strong metal. This must lead to a secure ward of the hospital. It's locked shut. I can't open it. And this keys to the archives, not to this, right? Yeah. That will have to wait. Here's some news of the outside world. Why, thank you kindly. How thoughtful you are. Okay, now that she's distracted, perhaps I can go into the archives. See if I have anything new to say to her. My goodness. 
how quickly things change in the outside world. This is the hospital archive, where a record of each patient must be stored. If Mr. Dupree was really committed at East Hill, his file should be here, somewhere. Yeah, emphasis on somewhere, didn't you say it's poorly sorted? Which means I get to sort it, yay! The portrait of a restrained patient surrounded by caretakers and a doctor. Why the hell would you want a portrait of that? It's creepy. It's been a long time since this desk was last used. It's covered in discarded papers and pens and a noticeable layer of dust. All locked. A metal locker. A small sign reads, Seized Objects. Well, let's unseize them. Let's perform the unseizuring. Some personal effects, probably sent in by the patient's families, but deemed unsafe by the caretakers. One of them is a stack of thick sheets of paper, carelessly bound together, bearing the drawings and paintings of a troubled mind. Well, that's the one. Or, the ones. Only a couple of pictures in their frames. Watercolor paintings and drawings of different subjects. A tree, a vase with flowers, something that could be a portrait, but the colors are dispersed. Shapes broken, decomposed and mixed in a whirl of bright flecks. This cabinet contains many documents detailing the treatment of patients, ranging from two decades ago to last year. Well, let's get started. Okay, his file is right here, Dupree Alexander, room 108A. <laughs> that was quick. All the files are missing. It's as if they've been torn out. Only a little piece of paper remains, with an address written on it. Paul Street, 26. Could that be where Alexander Dupree lived before he was committed to this hospital? Paul Street. I should follow this new lead and see if it takes me somewhere useful. Interesting. So yeah, you actually get to use this map and go to different locations. That's very cool. You know what I suspect, though? What if Paul Street is the street from his dreams where he met that man? We shall see. Alright, nothing more here, right? You know, I should probably write down his room number. Probably doesn't matter that much, but 108A, just in case. Dupree's room. Got it. <laughs> I, just, I just walked behind her and disappeared for like five minutes. And she's not suspicious at all. Perfectly normal. Go give this man his drawings back. Here you go. Here. Are these your drawings? Great wonder. They're back. Someday they will understand light and shape as I understand them. Thank you, friend. If you want, take these cardboard sheets. Thanks to you. I have no more need of them. Okay, I don't know why I'd want these, but thank you. 
Large symmetric patch of black ink in the middle. I have heard of this technique, but always thought it an eccentricity. Patients are supposed to see in them the deeper causes of their ailment. Okay. It's weird that they're on, like, cardboard, and not just normal paper. But yeah, the ink blot test thing. Hmm, what do I see? Cthulhu. A beetle. Hmm. I don't see anything. <laughs> I can't make any sense from that. Uh. Yep. No idea. Well, yeah, it's obviously a sad face. Well, maybe not sad. Maybe more like scared. Well, I could try giving that to that woman who did not want to really talk to me. But first, let's visit the address. Let's go, good sir. This door is number 24, I'm looking for number 26. Hall Street. It ends here at this corner. Okay, no, this is not the place that I saw in my dreams. Number 26. This is the place I was looking for. But the door is bricked up. I must find another way to get in. I know. I'll show the bricks the ink blot tests and they'll allow me entrance. Damn. Windows? The windows are so thoroughly cemented over that it almost mixes with the facade. Well, are one of these windows at least Windows Vista? At least then it'd be easy to break. The ruins of an old chapel, apparently destroyed by fire. A mess of wooden planks and the remains of benches and chairs. Hi. You creepy flying omen of death. There is someone on their knees, praying. Their face is covered by a hood. Oh, that's a person? That's apparently a person. Uh, I thought it was a blob. I'm sorry to bother you, but... Do you know why has the house next door been bricked up? Excuse me? An improvised altar covered in candles. I can do something with the candles? What are you going to do with them? With this candle, I can light my way through the dark. Okay. It's not kind of disrespectful to take one of the candles being used for prayer and use it as a light source? Alright, sure. The wooden cross remains almost intact. I'll show you the ink blots. No. Into the dark hole we go. Looks like this hole leads to the building next door.
This must be the interior of the bricked up building I saw in the street. Mr. Dupree's former residence. The door is bricked up. A sunny beach lapped by the waves of a gentle sea. Something on top of the fireplace mantle thing. A military medal. There is a, there is a relief of Our Majesty the Queen and several pieces of metal engraved with the names of battles unknown to me. I'll take this with me. Maybe it will mean something to one of Alexander's fellow patients in the hospital. Hmm, that'd be the military guy that thought he was a coward. There is something among the ashes. It looks like a piece of paper. There's something written on it. It is slightly burnt on one side, and some of the letters are missing. It almost seems scrambled, but maybe it's... maybe it's Latin? I don't know. One man in high uniform. He's missing an arm. A few books remain in the shelf. Mostly doubtful treatises in chemistry and alchemy. Among the titles are Trithemius's De Lapid Philosophico. I don't know how to pronounce these damn names. Gabers? G Gabers? Gabers? These are obviously French. De Vention Veritatis. The anonymous work Turba Philosophorum. And Ludwig Prinz Mysteries of the Worm. Hey, at least that one I can pronounce. A large metal safe. The safe requires a combination of four numbers. Oh god. One, two, three. I just went past four. Whatever. Yeah, I have no idea. To save that for another time. Although it is most likely related to this, I suppose. Maybe. I already looked at this, didn't I? Yeah. Okay, well I can always come back here. Hold on, I'm calling it right now. On my way back, outside of this place, I'm gonna find the hooded person standing in the dark, waiting for me. What do you bet? Aw. I'm disappointed. Hello? Okay. Do you want a medal for your bravery? Can you tell me what this means? Okay, bye. Wait, did that actually- Oh my god, it actually worked. I, I just had the random idea. What if I try to burn the paper? The rest of the letters are visible now. It seems to be Latin. I think it reads... I've seen a dead eyelid move. Ew. Oh. And that's also the password combination. Yay! I actually solved something!
I am operating at an uncharacteristically high level of efficiency in terms of puzzle solving abilities. So we have six, one. If it's after, it's addition. If it's before, it's subtraction. Yeah, so it's four and five. So six, one, four, five. Now I just have to remember how these things work. You go in one direction until you hit the right number, and then you go the other direction. Starting... Does it matter which direction you start with? Usually you start clockwise, right? Bingo! It's empty. Wait. This is not a safe, but an entrance to a passage. It is completely dark. The only way to know where it leads is by crawling in. Let's go. There's working machinery down here? What's powering it? Four chairs forming a circle, as if the hideout served as some sort of meeting place. Mathematic formulae written fast and carelessly. Some of these symbols I have never seen before. A list of numbers. It looks like some kind of calendar or timetable. What in the hell is this thing? Uh. There is someone sitting here, wearing a horrible mask and a yellow robe. He is not moving. Wait, that mask is the same one I saw in the ink blot. I don't know if I want to take off his mask. I guess I have to. It's only a yellow robe. There's no body inside at all. What can be the meaning of this? Uh... Now you show up! Okay, I'm just gonna go now. Wait, if I close the safe now and just locked her inside, I... <laughs> I guess she'd be stuck there. The mask I found in Alexander Dupree's former residence. It is similar to those used by ancient Greek theater. The holes for the eyes are missing. So it would be impossible for the wearer to see a thing. The expression is one of excruciating horror. Well, I suppose I could cut out the eyes with this, maybe? It looks kind of sharp. No. I don't really have any reason to cut out the eyes. Just not a very good mask if you, mask if you can't see. I can't, like, talk to her, can I? I just want to be sure. No? You want the mask? Alright, you're good.
Okay, well that was a very fruitful exploration. I'm actually kind of proud of myself for solving these puzzles so far. I thought for sure I would have gotten stuck by now. Anyway, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. Got lots of stuff, have this creepy mask that matches one of the ink blots. This one. Well, except the mask doesn't have the eyes. I have this medal that I can give to the dude. I can probably use these cards to give to the woman who doesn't want to talk to me. Yeah, a lot of things I can do. So, yeah, I'm really enjoying this. It's reminding me of why I like the original season so much. It's still, to a certain degree, veers a little bit too much into the silly adventure game stuff, like the whole pick, like, you know, I have a shilling, but it's too much, and the paperboy can't make change, so I have to find a sixpence piece in a jar of water and then give it to him. It's, a, you know, it's a bit convoluted, but so far it hasn't been too bad. And everything that I liked about the original season is still true here. It's still got really good sound design, it's creepy, it's interesting, and yeah, it's just, it's good. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.